if you're doing product visualization in Blender and you're making supplement bottles, you're making vitamin bottles and shit like that, you're bound to run into a situation where you're going to have to create these little caps which have ridges on them, okay? And in this video, I'm going to show you a method for making those ridges. Now, this is not the only way to do it. This is not the best way to do it. This is just a way to do it. And just a little disclaimer, this is not going to be ideal if you're going to do very close-up shots of your supplement bottle cap, but it's going to work just fine if you're going to do something like, I don't know, a shot like this one right here, which is like your regular Amazon product listing uh, image then it's gonna work just fine. And also just a little heads up, we're not gonna do this using modeling because if we model this, it's gonna give us a lot of polygons and that could slow down our scene. We're gonna do this using texturing. I'm gonna show you a very simple texturing trick to create something like this. So look, let's just delete our default cube and with shift A, we're gonna add a circle. And in this add circle menu, we're gonna increase the number of vertices because you want this circle to be nice and round and smooth. So let's set the number of vertices to 128. And let's just say for the sake of this exercise, we're going to extrude this cap up, we're going to fill it, and we're going to bevel this once just so we have this little edge here, okay? So we want this part and this part to have ridges while this is supposed to be smooth. And let's also say we want to add a little loop cut here. And we're also going to add another one underneath that so we can take this and we can scale that up. Let me show you my screencast keys. We can scale that up a little bit like this just so we have this little edge down here. So the ridges are going to be here while everything else is going to be smooth, all right? So here's how you add your ridges in Blender. You go over to your shading tab, and in your shading tab, you should have your material editor for you. It's probably underneath here. I change it over here because it's just a little bit easier to work with when it's on the left side. And down here by default, you're going to have your image editor. It's going to look like this, but you want to switch that to your UV editor so you can edit your UVs. We're going to have to edit our UVs. And by the way, guys, in this tutorial, this is probably going to last like 10, 12 minutes or something like that. But if you get the hang of this, you can pull this off in like two, three minutes. So you're going to add a new material. And in that new material, with, next to these two nodes, with Shift-A, you're going to add a wave texture node, which you're going to plug into your base color, just so you can see what you're doing. And as you can see, by default, the wave texture node looks like shit. So we have to change the way this wave texture is projected on our surface, so it looks like the little ridges. To do that, we're going to use our node wrangler. If you don't know what a node wrangler is, it's a little extension you have to add. You have to activate inside of Blender. Just go up here to Edit Preferences, Add-ons. Up here, type in Node and check this box, and it's going to stay here next time you want to use it and this allows you to select a node like this wave texture node and when you press control t it's going to attach these two nodes to that one and these two nodes are just going to help you control the way that this texture is projected onto the surface all right so you want to change this from generated to uv so that it's going to be projected onto your surface based on the uv map of the object which means we're going to have to do a little bit of uv unwrapping right now we don't have a uv map because we didn't do any uv unwrapping that's why we just see black right now but before we do anything else, we should also select this edge up here and this one down here in edge select mode and just do control E mark seam just so we can separate this. And that allows you to use L in face select mode. When you hover over the surface, you can just press L and it's immediately going to select this entire surface. That's what we're going to have to use for this. So now select one little face on the side like this, press U unwrap angle based. As you can see now, that's UV unwrapped, so you can see that in your UV map over here, you can see some lines for your ridges. Now, of course, we're not just going to use this as a black and white texture, we're going to use this to create some bumps later on. But now, while this face is still selected here, and while you're still in face select mode, you're going to use L to select this entire surface, and that selects the entire surface, but this face here is still the last one that we selected manually, so that's what's called the active face. That means the last face or the last element which you selected. As you can see, it's outlined in a white line, okay? So it's surrounded by white edges while everything else is orange. So now, when this is your active face, you press U, unwrap, follow active quad. So now everything else, and click OK here, everything else is going to be UV unwrapped according to this little face right here. Now that allows you to take curved surfaces like this one right here, or round surfaces, and unwrap them in a perfectly straight line in an organized way. If you wouldn't have done this, if you just use normal UV unwrapping, it's gonna unwrap it like a circle, and that's not going to do you any good, as you can see right here. So just use the method that I showed you. And now you can see that these lines are behaving the way you want them to behave. Now, while we still have these selected, let's press Control I to invert the selection. Let's just add another material there. Plus, assign new material. Just reduce the roughness to make that shiny. And let's also copy this roughness value into our first material because we probably want to make that shiny as well. Now, we also want to go object shade smooth to make this smooth and when you use smooth shading you also want to use some supporting geometry so select all the edges which you want to sharpen here because we don't want to have smooth shading on those so just select all these edge loops and press ctrl b 
scroll up one so you have two segments and in this little bevel menu just set the shape value to one and that's going to take care of your shading for you so now you can see that this is starting to make a little bit more sense now just another thing we have to do to turn these into bumps because we don't want black lines you're going to move this aside unplug this you don't want that running into base color instead you're going to add a normal map node plug your color into the color input of the normal map node and then plug the output from the normal map node into the normal input of the principal node like this now when you do this at first it's going to look crazy right here but you just have to reduce the strength in the normal map node a little bit to something like 0.2 let's say and as you can see it already starts looking pretty damn good so maybe we should increase the roughness here a little bit just so it's not too shiny but as you can see that gives us some pretty nice ridges now just another thing you want to keep in mind and i'm just going to make this red for now or maybe i'll make my ridges black or red or dark or something just so you can see this a little bit better another thing you want to keep in mind is that you can change the size you can change the size of your ridges okay and in this case we messed up because we have some seams you can clear all your seams you can select this material with the ridges up here and just click on select that's going to select all the faces which have this material on them and that's also going to allow you to adjust the uv map so for example you can select everything down here with a scale that down with x okay sx and you can make it smaller and that's going to make your ridges a lot larger of course this is ridiculous you don't want them to look like this but i'm trying to just show you that you can adjust the size of these ridges if you scale it up they're going to get smaller and finer just keep in mind that when you do this somewhere in the back of your model you're going to have a seam you have to find that it's for, uh, for us it's over here in my situation it's over here when you're scaling it you want to make sure that you don't fuck up your seam because it might look a little bit odd in this area if it's not matched properly but it's pretty hard to mess it up too much. So just keep that in mind. Just make sure that you check it in case you're going to do a full spin or something like that. So this is how you make ridges inside of Blender. This is a question that I got from one of my students in my Blender school in the Digitally Enhanced Club. It was a really good question. So shout out to him. And this is, again, this method is going to help you if you're doing like regular shots of products, if you just want to have a, a normal picture of a product. But if you do very close up shots, you're going to be able to see that these are not real ridges and they don't start to, they don't look that good anymore so just keep that in mind it's a pretty good texturing method and again you can probably do this in one minute if you if you do this a couple of times if you get the hang of this you can do this in two or three minutes max so let me know what you want to see next like the video subscribe to the channel if you didn't already i'll see you in the next one